somebody freshen the color on their hair and they are living for it. <laughs> I love it. Welcome back to Every Disney Movie Ever. My name is Justin. I'm watching Every Disney Movie Ever. Today I'm going to talk about Earth Star Voyager. Earth Star Voyager is a 1988 Magical World of Disney television release. It is directed by James Goldstone, cinematography by Robert N. Stevens, editing by Edward A. Beery and Edward Nasser. The music is by Lalo Schifrin, and it's written by Ed Spielman. James Goldstone is best known for Kent State, Iron Horse, When Time Ran Out, and The Case of the Dangerous Robin. Robert M. Stevens, I covered in the video about Mr. Boogity. The link will be in the description. Edward A. Beery is best known for When Time Ran Out, How to Succeed with Girls, the Dawn is Dead and Roller Coaster. Edward Nasser is best known for Knight Rider, The Fall Guy, The Wizard, and this. Lalo Schifrin I covered in the video about Return from Witch Mountain, the link will be in the description. Ed Spielman is best known for Dead Man's Gun, The Young Riders, and Kung Fu. The film stars Brian McNamara, Julia Montgomery, Jason Micas, Tom Bresnahan, Margaret Lang, Rick Duncan Rieger, and Dina Gaston. Brian McNamara plays Jonathan Hayes and is best known for Army Wives, NCIS, Arachnophobia, and Hawaii Five-0. Julia Montgomery plays Sally Arthur and is best known for Revenge of the Nerds, Stop or My Mom Will Shoot, Steward of School, and sharp. Jason Mike has placed Jesse Beanstalk and he's was known for Dragon Tales, The Beachcombers, Ernest Goes to School, and Devil Kings. Tom Bresnahan plays Huxley Wells and he's was known for The Kingdom, Amazing Stories, Mirror Mirror, and Diplomatic Community. Margaret Langrick plays Luz and is best known for Harry and the Hendersons, My American Cousin, Cold Comfort, and American Boyfriends. Duncan Rieger plays Jacob Brown and is best known for The Monster Squad, Flying Virus, V, and Wizards and Warriors. Dinah Gaston plays Lonnie and is best known for The Beachcombers, Winona Earp, Deep Sleep, and Fargo. The film was shot primarily in Canada and is actually three hours long. It was supposed to serve as a two episode pilot for a television series but was never picked up. Each episode was 96 minutes, so a two hour time slot on television and uh, it never got picked up so it became a movie which makes it three hours long. The very beginning of the film takes place in 2082 and the rest of the film takes place in 2088. It is about a group of young people ages 14 to 25 I think who are chosen for a 25 year space mission on a ship called the Voyager to find a new planet for humans to inhabit. They have cryo sleep so they won't age as quickly, but they chose young people who are geniuses obviously for this reason, 25 year mission. And it's kind of about the beginning of their mission because obviously the show would have covered their entire mission so the movie is really about the beginning of their mission and hurdles they come up to and different problems that arise and before I dive into the heart of what I thought about this movie I wanted to mention that the visual effects and special effects were really well done I forgot at the very beginning when they were showing the ships in space and all of that, that it was in 1988 because I believe they used practical small models to make it look like ships in space and it did a really good job. I was like, oh wait, this was 1988. It's not like visual effects, probably practical special effects. It was really well done. It's really funny to me that back in the 80s, we thought the future, like 2088, would still have buttons to control things. like. Not not fingerprint scanners, not hand scanners, not touch screens, still buttons. Amazing. This film was a roller coaster, not emotionally, not story-wise. To me, liking it, it was a roller coaster. When the film started, I was very invested. I was like, oh, this is a really cool idea. It's a cool concept. Their main captain dies right away when they start the mission. And I was like, oh my gosh, someone on the ship is evil. This is gonna be so cool. And then something would happen where I would go, oh no, 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 I don't, I don't like that. You lost me. You've lost me completely. I do not like it. So for instance, right away, they get on this mission. I'm like, oh my God, all these young people, they're really smart. They're on this mission. This is so cool. And then their like main captain dies. And I was like, oh, drama. Someone on the ship is evil. This is so interesting. And then they pick up Captain Jacob Brown. And when they originally picked up Captain Jacob Brown, I was like, no, I do not like you. Your cynicism is not cute. You're really annoying. Jacob eventually grew on me, but I was not about it. Then there was some stuff about OTZ ships. I don't know what OTZ stands for. It's something about outsiders and not being with the normal normal humans, the like space NASA anymore. That was really interesting. And then they landed in an OTZ territory and there was this whole like 
tournament fight running man situation that I was like, nah, you lost me again. I'm not here for this. Then they'd go back on the ship and something crazy would happen and I'd be like, I'm so here for the ship dynamic and everyone on the ship being the way they are and it's just so interesting. And then they picked up a cyborg and I was not about the cyborg part. I just, oh, but then Priscilla, like the ship's main computer was murdered and I was so invested in that. <laughs> And it, that had me for real. And then like other crap, it was just like the most up and down of me enjoying it and then being like really annoyed. I couldn't, I've never had that kind of experience watching a Disney movie before, probably because it's three hours. So they had a lot of time for me to be going like this. But I, most Disney, most of the time it's either I really like the movie or I'm into it and then I hate it or I hate it and then I'm into it. But this, it was like, oh, I'm really interested. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, I'm really interested. Oh, no, 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 no. The end of the film is really satisfying and a great setup for the future TV show, but it didn't end on like a super cliffhanger. So I'm not mad that it didn't become a TV show. I feel very satisfied in the ending that it was, but I also see the potential for the TV show and that I would have been semi-interested in, I feel like. Even though I consider the film a roller coaster and me liking it, I came away fond of it. It also flew by. I need you to know I watched the first hour and a half, took a massive break, and then watched the second hour and a half, but I don't think that had anything to do with me thinking it flew by because both halves were really fast in my opinion. They, they went by, a lot happened. I kind of came away liking this movie. I wrote, even though it's cheesy, corny, and sometimes cringe, it's still all around fun. So I think I'm gonna give it seven spaceships out of 10. Our total movie count is. Parent, death, tone, cry, count are still the same. If you wanna keep up with what movie I'm watching when, follow me on Instagram or Twitter, you'll find out what movie I'm watching when. I put up videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Until next time, comment, like, subscribe, and I'm gonna show if you are, so you do, and don't, be the admiral about it or the otz people about it yeah the guy who played jacob was so jacked and he was like an acrobat or something i swear to god that guy was doing freaking bars and acrobatics all over the place in this freaking movie it was crazy